Howdy folks, you know the technology for welding has is just it has evolved so much It is amazing what's out there right now, and I got to thank a company called best arc They have sent us some stuff before and they sent this in for review and I'm thinking this is going to be pretty amazing In fact, I have to eat words because I never used to like the 110 machines They were always you know not even good for a hobbyist or something and these days even a 110 machine, well, this one here, rated up to 145 amps. Wow. This is Best Arcs, and it's a three-in-one machine. So it's MIG, TIG, and stick. And we're going to get into it right now. Rather than waste time watching me cut open the box and pull everything out, I just took it all out of the box, laid it on the bench, and that way we can see we've got a nice little manual. Look at the size of these things. And this is 145. It's... You know, and it, it's not even heavy. I mean, it actually is a, you know, it's probably 10 pounds or something. Heck, the MIG wire they is, is almost the same weight as the machine. This is uh, nice. They gave me, uh, it's five kilogram or five, yeah, five kilograms or point, no, point five kilogram, one millimeter. Uh, this is flux core, by the way, which, uh, I, that it goes that agrees with me because I like to have a fan or something blowing on me and the gas type MIG welders have always been kind of you know they're good they are good but I think the flux core is fine you know, especially for a hobbyist you shouldn't have to get into all that other stuff now they've got a nice uh, again really good quality welding cable these people are serious about what they're doing and they've got a really nice MIG uh, configuration right here all looks like yeah already hooked to the machine ready to go and this is gasless, uh, so the TIG thing has got me a little baffled. We'll try to figure that out together, I guess, because uh, it's gasless, which means it's flux core. But I checked for flux core on TIG, and I couldn't find anything that really works. So, yeah, it's, that one's got me a little baffled. So we'll come back to it. Maybe somebody will comment in the section below and tell me about what's going on with that, because I'm lost. Uh, and again, we got the stick. Uh, so we'll be doing the stick, and we'll be doing the MIG. Obviously, we're not doing the TIG. Uh, I don't see any of the TIG things or supplies, whatever, here. But these are sold at different levels. And this is the, I guess we'll call it the bottom tier, which is fine. You know, it's a 145 MIG and stick. That's really all I would want for my shop anyways. I don't need anything else. And when you have 100, up to 145 amps, you've got more than enough power to, you know, for stick or TIG or whatever, or MIG, whatever it is you're doing, really for most, uh, mostly around the shop or the hobbyists. So we'll uh, set the welding bench up and we'll go to town with this, but I uh, just want to go over the, some of the things with you, the features. And the first thing I noticed was the cable is not overly long, so it's not too bad for length, so you don't have a lot of you know cable laying all over the place. Same with the stick, they don't give you a lot of cable, they give you enough cable, yeah, which is good. And the same with the ground, ground's pretty, actually ground's pretty decent for length. Uh, we've got three tips, big tips for different, I guess they're for different sizes, I assume, plus the wheel. We've got an extra wheel, so I don't know what we're set up right now, but I've got to show you the setup on this thing. Uh, let's bring you over here. Uh, let's see how I can do this. I'm going to bring you over here, and we'll take a look at how uh, the MIG wire goes in on this machine, because it's a little different. Yeah, and it's cool. I, I, I like what they did. Yeah. Yeah, they have one of these little latches the spring loaded on each side of the machine and so we unlock this and then this opens up this way yeah cool now there's where your MIG wire is going to go now of course a lot of people are going to say what about the big wheels and no you you're not going to get the big you know big pound wheels on these things you're going to get this, the usual one and two pound spools on here and look at this setup they've got going on through this is nice and they've got a wire feed button here so you can you know auto feed the wire through as you're setting up your your MIG wire and stuff so that hey that is nice it's beautiful and they've got the scale back here i don't know if you can see that but uh yeah what an awesome machine i don't even know why i'm locking it back up because i'm going to go ahead and set mig wire up here in a second <laughs> okay i'm going to load the uh, mig wire in first and just show you how that's done obviously opening back up the top this has got to have a little bit of a brake drag to it so we've got it open and we're looking at the stuff now uh we'll undo, undo that this is going to back this bearing off so we can get our wire up through but the other thing I want to check on here is I just want to check. I've got 1.0 wire and I've got the 1.0 showing at the top here, which is where it leads in right here to the groove. Okay, good. So that's 
that's all set and that's ready to bite onto the wire to help push it up the spool. I've also gone ahead and taken the tip off right here, uh, remove the tip just so we can feed the wire through without any you know problem because yeah, you always take the tip out, feed the wire through, put the tip back on kind of thing. So first thing I'm gonna do is unload this brake and get it ready so we can put the new MIG wire in place. And that's got just a slight drag to it. Okay, this doesn't freely spin, so that's kind of good because we want everything to drag a little bit so that the uh, spool doesn't unload itself. Uh, yeah, if you've ever seen what happens, it's these these spools can be absolutely amazing. Well, they uh, they kind of yeah they kind of go off like a bomb and they turn into a big rat's nest and it's a, it's a real mess. Now they've got this taped in, so hopefully I can get this uh, out of there without just. Let's see if we can just tear the paper or something, and that way we can get the MIG wire loaded. Okay, and this is where things are going to get real funky real fast. So, okay, the wire, I'm going to keep some load on the wire while I place that and, you know, get that. Whoa, it's, it, it's trying to go already on me, yep. So, <laughs> let's put this pack on, get that locked down a little bit so i got the brake on it. And let's see, we're set there. Yeah, hopefully. And then I'm not sure how much pressure. You obviously got a spring, so you want to kind of just drag it a little bit. Let's see how that drags. Yeah, if you sort of feel it, you can kind of get an idea as to how much you know drag you've got, which is good. Now I'm gonna straighten out the wire a little bit here, obviously, because it's got to go through the tubing here and on up. Okay, so here we are. We got the cutters and there, I'll get this backed off for a second. And I'm just going to kind of cut the piece off and back this whole thing up because I got to. So you, re you really want to be. This is the hardest part of loading a MIG <laughs> is, is getting this wire straight through without anything going boom like that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yep, she really tried to get away from me. Oh. Yeah, there isn't a whole lot of room here. Now, this should go on up through, and it's not. It's it's hanging up a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Now, once we got it, we're going to bring this in. Uh, just the... Uh, it actually has... I don't know how much tension it's got. Let's see if we... Yeah, there we go. Now, I'm going to hold the handle up, and I've got the wire feed here, so I'll just go ahead and see how this does. Man, that was a mess. Hopefully that wire will come on. Come on through. Yep. There we go. Yep. And we're we're there. Look at this mess already. God, that's something. Anyways, uh, cut about three, leave about three quarters of an inch or so hanging off. And uh, we'll start the tip back on. And they give you a wrench for this, by the way, so that's cool. Now, check the tip, too, and see what size it is. It is a 1.0, okay, to 1.2 or something tip, so we're good. Uh, best arc includes this little, nice little wrench. Uh, should be this one right here. No, no, it's not either. Okay, maybe it's this outside. Oh, there it is. Okay. And there, we'll just, you know, just, uh, I guess you could say comfortably snug it up. Uh, this is the weird part. You kind of turn, I think it was clockwise. Yeah, there we go. And it kind of pushes it on. Well, if you want to take it off, you turn it clockwise as well. You never turn counterclockwise because it'll lock and it will not come undone. Uh, and the only reason I like to keep the shield on here is it just sort of helps some of the gas to trap up in here when you're uh, running the MIG. So this is all done. I'm going to tighten that up just a little bit more. I'm really not sure about yeah, how much tension we need on here. Huh, that looks pretty good. So we'll close her up for that part of it anyways. Now, uh, the other thing I want to go over with you is the controls at the front here so that everybody is on the same page and everybody understands how this works because, again, it's it's a really modern system. It's so it is a little bit different than some of the machines you might be used to. So we're going to go over all that right, right now. So let's go around to the front and we'll look at that. Okay, so I put the power on and the fan ran for about a minute or so and then it shuts down. Now the fan will not come on unless there's uh, a heat buildup inside the machine. So once we're all set up, that fan has run and we're done. Now, a uh, couple of buttons here. I guess we'll go with this first button over here. And it's pointing 
at the 0 0.035, which is about the one millimeter size wire. The one millimeter size wire kind of falls, yeah, kind of falls in a gray area because it's not a 0 0.30, it's not a 0 0.035 actually, but 0 0.035 is like 0 0.9 of a millimeter. So it's close enough that that's what I'm gonna call it. But if you hit this button, you can see I can go up to uh, point, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, up to point zero three zero zero three five and point zero four zero, which is a really heavy, uh, boy, that would be a heavy piece of wire. Anyway, so, we're, so that's zero three five. Now this um, does something where it syncs between uh, the current at what you're using and how much speed you need and it will determine how much speed it should give the feed the wire to you so there's no speed control for the wire and it auto feeds itself so that's kind of and that's fine i you know, i tell you the truth I, I never thought i'd like that i actually really love it because it's one less thing to have to deal with or worry about because the machine deals with the speed itself now let's go to the top button which is right here i'm using a pencil because uh yeah, I didn't know how else to point these little things out to you, but uh, right now we're at 2T. There's also a 4T. Now the 2T means that when you hit the trigger, it will weld and it also feed. When I let go, everything will stop. It will not weld. It doesn't feed. That's, uh, that's pretty much 2T is all you really want to uh, use. But uh, for you professional guys out there that have a certain application or something, there's a 4T. Now the 4T will feed and uh, weld, but when you let go, the weld will continue to stay on, but the feed will stop. Now, why you'd want that, uh, comment in the section below. I have no idea. <laughs> this is showing 110 volt because that's where we're at and that's what the machine is. There are generations that are bigger than this one. This is the generation seven. The generation nine, for example, will, will have the, uh, to 110 or, and or 220. Uh, current wise where it looks like, yep, 50 amps. And this is for the MIG setting because that's what we're on over here. There's a button right here that shows for MIG. And also at the MIG, it'll show that it's 50 amps at 16.5 volts. So that's a pretty good setting right now, I think for the wire size that we have. Now, if we need to increase that, I'll just show you. Let's go up to 60 or, you know, we'll just turn the knob. And we go up to 60, you'll see we got 17 volts on the MIG. Now on the stick welder, it would be the same thing. We would, we would be able to, go down to the stick welder here. Oh, there goes the fan, great. Uh, 20 amp. Well, personally, it'll go up to, in this case for the stick, you probably would want about 70, I'm 70, 75 amps, somewhere in that range for most stick welding that you're going to be probably doing. And of course, it also shows your voltage. Now, I'm going to go back to MIG and uh, set it back down to, I guess we'll just say 50 amps until we're ready to test and see how it does. This thing is so small, it's kind of crazy. Now you have a positive and a negative for the ground. So when you're doing stick, you're going to want the negative ground. When you're doing the MIG, you're going to want the positive ground because that's well, that's part of the way these machines uh, work. Let's see how that looks. Does that look good? Okay. Okay, I got a big no-no going here, but uh, so I'll just let you know I'm running that on a hundred-foot extension cord, which you're not supposed to, but because the voltage and the lower voltage and whatever, a lot of times the welders will choke. So we'll see. We're just going to run a bead straight across here. So there will be a flash. So anyone who's sensitive to flash, don't watch this part. Don't watch the show. Just, yeah, don't look. <laughs> yeah, we're going to, we're going to do a flashy. All right, here we go. We're ready. <laughs> Okay, there's the actual weld. I just, you know, just ran that across. It's kind of a high bead, tell you the truth. Probably didn't get a lot of penetration, but at uh, 50, uh, if you needed more, obviously, you know, turn the current up to 60 amp, maybe 65 to get better penetration. But uh, it's a pretty bead, and I think it did a terrific job. It was very smooth. There was no pulsing or, you know, coughing, spitting, that sort of thing. And actually, the, the splatter, the splatter was pretty low, so. Pretty darn good machine so far. Let's go to the stick. Okay, we're now set up for stick weld. We're on the stick welder. We've selected stick. I set it to 70 amps. So I'm just taking a guess here because I really don't know what to expect, obviously, from the machine. And this is a 332 stick. It's a stainless steel arc stick. So 
again I don't know oh, I don't know why but uh, expect sparks okay just warning mm -hmm. Hmm. Wow, uh, and we popped the breaker out. Cool. <laughs> yeah, who knew? <laughs> but we got our weld done, so we're good. Yeah, that's on a hundred feet of extension cord, which is something you shouldn't do. Oh, she's already reset herself. So. Get you down there where oh my yeah there's a lot of okay just as she went off I got a lot of I got a quite a little bit of a mess there but oh it'll it'll clean up beautiful that's a stainless steel rod anyways I'm not even sure I found it in my shop I figured we'd use it today just for some fun so you can see that big floppy stainless steel run of uh, rod there but it gives you the idea. I mean, you got the impression of what it did. And it did a really nice job once I got it going. Though I think the current could have been set a little higher, but uh, once I got going, it was great. Now, uh, we probably should have been in like a 20 amp uh, outlet or something. Like I said, I'm on 100 feet of cord with a 15 amp uh, breaker behind that, which is too light. It's just too light for using a welder. And I know better than that, but I just thought I would try it to see how, how good or bad we rolled. And we did, we rolled. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we made a boo-boo. Uh, one millimeter wire is close to 0 0.30. So I had the wrong setting even when I was welding, but it still did a pretty good job. Yeah, <clears throat> I had that wrong. It was close, the one millimeter is closer to that uh, 0.30. So I thought better clear that up. So if you leave a comment in the description below, I'll send you a clown face or something sticker afterwards. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it happens, you know, <laughs> it's like, and uh, this on the MIG uh, end of it went up to 145 amps, but on the stick side, I noticed I could only get 105 amps out of it. And so that would be a limitation. And again, I've, like I said, I've uh, always not really been crazy about 110 machines, but this technology here is just so awesome that the 110 machines seem like they can do anything around the hobbyists, the shops like my own. I don't need more power than that. And and you saw the weld, uh, that was a stainless steel rod at one, what, at 70 amps. It didn't really need any more than that. It was doing, you know, it was doing the job. So machines like this can get you by and they're not a expensive, easy on the pocketbook compared to the old days when welders used to be, you know, 800 and $1,000 for, you know, a half decent one or something. Uh, so this is, uh, we're gonna have a good description in the link below where you can find you know, this little puppy here. Hopefully we'll, I think we have a discount coupon or something going on with that too right now. Sale price, something like that, I hope from Best Arc. Again, I wanna thank Best Arc for sending this over because uh, it's just one of those things. It's it's really nice to be able to play with a MIG welder for a change around here. And as you saw, the breaker went off and I was thinking, I was laughing because I was thinking, yeah, that's why you watch Coffee and Tools so you can see what we blew up today because, yeah, we knocked the breaker out and it reset. But uh, that was concerning. But there's a 100 feet of extension cord here that I'm plugged into. So, and that's not something you should do. You should try to get yourself to a nice, strong 20 amp outlet that's nearby wherever your work area is kind of thing. And uh, the table, which is a roll around, I rolled it back out to the barn. That's fine. I really like the roll around stuff because it's just so easy to get stuff in and out of here for you guys, you know, and we can set up woodworking or we can set up, you know, welding and, and metal work, whatever we're doing. Uh, the uh, MIG cable, I've just showed it to you there. It's about, I think it's about six feet, not even, uh, maybe yeah, about six feet long. So it's, and that to me is fine because I usually like to have the machine really close to where I'm working so I can reach over and just, you know, dial a little bit while I'm welding. So no complaints at all. Uh, this here, I'll tell you, that's, that is pretty amazing. It's a nice clean look to it too. And apparently I got the right tension because it did, again, nice job. And Best Arc has sent us some stuff in before. And in fact, their stuff uh, has been so good that when this came in, I guess you could say I already had confidence and knowledge out of the box without testing anything for you guys before we saw it. This was just as, uh, you know, day one for me as it was for you kind of thing. So I was like, yeah, you know, we're, we're finding stuff out. 
Now the TIG thing has totally got me a little, like I said, a little baffled, but it's gasless, this, so on the TIG, I'm not sure how that setup would go because obviously we don't have it, and but it can be set up and used for TIG apparently. But then if you watched the show back a while back, we also did a uh, spot weld with one of these one time and was using it as a spot welder from an Eastwood uh, collection that we had uh, years ago. And it worked, it worked pretty good. It was kind of interesting to try it out. And the uh, stick, uh, this was just some stainless rod that I don't know where this even came from, but I found it in my uh, archive of welding rods and thought, you know, just for just for the giggles, let's try it out and see what it what it does. I assume it's for stainless steel, but uh, did a, it was a nice looking bead. <laughs> it was real shiny. <laughs> Anyways, um, hopefully I might you guys check that out. It's it's a you know Best Arc does make some pretty nice machines for some very good prices. So meantime, hey, thanks for watching Copy Tools and please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell, and I am gonna get out of here. <laughs> Over and out.